Oh, I forgot about that. From a blazing start, these 10 restaurant chains quickly faded into the sunset for various reasons. Here are the 10 worst failed chain restaurants that no one misses. Bonanza Steakhouse and Ponderosa Steakhouse. This steak is medium rare. I asked for it medium. Bonanza Steakhouse blazed onto the scene in 1963 when Dan Blocker opened the restaurant in Westport, Connecticut. Blocker was well known for his role as Eric Haas Cartwright on the famed television show Bonanza. Since the popularity of westerns were at an all-time high, Bonanza Steakhouse became an instant hit with families. Bonanza was renowned for its sizzling sirloin and ribeye steaks. Aside from steaks, they sold buffet-style items ranging from chicken to seafood. It says it's all you can eat. Well, it's all you can eat, but Well, you what's can't. the difference if I give it to somebody else? In the mid-60s, the small chain was sold and then expanded to over 600 locations across the U.S. Around the same time Bonanza opened, Ponderosa Steakhouse opened. It was named after the fictional ranch on Bonanza. Competition between the two chains was initially intense. However, the rivalry came to an abrupt end in 1989 when the two chains merged. However, after several decades of success, interest faded in the two restaurants. In 1997, Bonanza Steakhouse and Ponderosa Steakhouse were purchased by Metro Media Family Steakhouses. The company went bankrupt in 2008, closing down most locations. While there are still a few in existence, they are sparse and mostly found in small towns on the East Coast and Midwest. Chee Chee's. We only really serve Mexican food. Chee Chee's brought Mexican cuisine to the American market in 1975. At the time, if you wanted Mexican food, you had to go to Taco Bell or you could make it on your own. Recognizing the market void, Chee Chee's became known for serving Tex-Mex food in a brightly lit, inviting atmosphere. While the food wasn't considered traditional Mexican cuisine, its American spin made the chain very popular. Chee Chee's first year generated $2 million in sales. After 10 years, they expanded to 200 locations throughout North America. However, by the late 80s and early 90s, other Mexican-inspired chains began to emerge nationally. Despite doing a brand revamp and exploring newer markets, in 2003, sales began to dwindle. To further complicate matters, three people died and 600 customers became ill when they consumed green onions tainted with hepatitis A at a Chi Chi's location. It's all downhill from here. Attempting to overcome the bad publicity and low sales, the once vibrant Americanized Tex-Mex chain tried to survive by adapting various gimmicks. The restaurant quickly fell from grace as consumers were tired of their cringe-worthy commercials. They eventually filed for bankruptcy. Kenny Rogers Roasters Check it out. Wow, Kenny Rogers Roasters finally open. In 1991, country music star Kenny Rogers joined forces with businessman and former KFC executive John Y. Brown, opening Kenny Rogers Roasters. The restaurant first opened in Florida, becoming an instant success. Kenny Rogers Roasters quickly became a pop culture icon. In fact, the restaurant was so popular that it even featured on an episode of Seinfeld. This restaurant chain quickly expanded to 350 locations globally within a few years. However, their road to success came with some bumps. In 1992, Cluckers Wood Roasted Chicken filed a lawsuit against the company for stealing their wood roasted chicken idea. Not cool! The suit was settled in 1994 when Kenny Rogers Roasters bought a majority stake in the company. In addition to the lawsuit, they also experienced competition from Boston Chicken and their rotisserie chicken. Kenny Rogers Roasters ended up filing for bankruptcy in 1998. The restaurant chain was later purchased by Nathan's Famous, who sold it again in 2008 to an overseas franchise. First time here? Then become an official Babble Topper by hitting that subscribe button. Hey, it's free. Now let's get back to business. The show goes on! Planet Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. When Planet Hollywood was launched, people were literally seeing stars. The restaurant began in 1991 when theme restaurants were at an all-time high. This restaurant was all things Hollywood. It started with the backing of actors Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Whoopi Goldberg, and Demi Moore, who had a 17% ownership. Each celebrity made guest appearances at openings and would drop in at various locations to dine. This generated customer excitement as guests wanted wondered who would show up and when. After a year, Planet Hollywood opened three more locations in Southern California, London, and Chicago. Each subsequent year, the restaurant chain continued to expand. So with all this fanfare, what went wrong? To keep their stockholders content, ownership quickly expanded by adding more restaurants globally. However, this 
rapid expansion was too much to maintain. Opening new branches cost $2 million, and the return on investment took too long to recover. Long, 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 long. <laughs> In 1999, Planet Hollywood stock was delisted, forcing investors and the restaurant to declare bankruptcy. In response, the company downsized and reorganized Planet Hollywood. This decreased locations from 87 to 35 branches globally. While it allowed the stock to be relisted, after a few years, the restaurant went broke again. This leaves a measly six restaurant locations still in operation today. All Star Cafe Hello? Hollywood? When All Star Cafe first opened, it was a home run with sports fans. This sports-themed restaurant opened in Times Square in 1995. All Star Cafe appealed to tourists and later expanded into the Las Vegas Strip and Cancun. The owners of Planet Hollywood conceived the idea of creating a sports restaurant to further enhance their existing theme restaurant portfolio. All Star Cafe provided familiar stadium cuisine to its customers and sold sports souvenirs as a side business. Well known athletes like Joe Montana, Wayne Gretzky, Tiger Woods, Andre Agassi, and Shaquille O'Neal were All-Star Cafe investors. This brought in sports fans in droves. However, in 1998, themed restaurants began to lose their appeal. Furthermore, the bad service and overpriced menu items were resulting in the chain losing customers. Sorry, you guys, but I can't pay that. It's too much money. With fewer people coming to the restaurant, multiple closures ensued, and Planet Hollywood eventually sold the chain. The change in ownership didn't do much good as the chain soon vanished completely from the landscape. ESPN Zone ESPN, baby! ESPN Zone was an entertainment center and theme restaurant chain across the United States. This restaurant contained TV studios, arcades, and radio studios. It was also operated by Disney Regional Entertainment to increase Pleasure Island attractions. It was designed to give people an ESPN experience at Disney World. Game changer. However, despite initial discussions with ESPN, ESPN, the project took time to approve. ESPN Club did come to Walt Disney World in 1996, containing 13,000 square feet of television screens as a boardwalk entertainment space. At this time, Disney purchased ABC and ESPN was part of the deal. The restaurant project got the green light. Originally called ESPN Grill, with openings across major cities, it was later renamed ESPN Zone, denoting more than one venue. In 2009, their Denver and Atlanta locations closed, one year later, only two restaurants existed. While the ESPN Zone restaurants are no longer up and running, ESPN Club and ESPN Grill locations can still be found at Disney World. Rainforest Cafe Welcome to the jungle, Essa. This jungle-themed restaurant was first opened in the Mall of America in 1994 and was designed to generate an atmosphere of a tropical rainforest. The Rainforest Cafe contained fog machines, plant growth, rainforest animals, brick textures depicted ancient ruins, while while support pillars were tree trunks. Waterfalls containing a fountain were in the dining area. Aquariums containing tropical fish dotted the restaurant and gift shop. Simulated thunderstorms occurred every 20 minutes and used strobe lights with thunder effects coming through subwoofers. You thunder, you can suck my the Rainforest Cafe was unique and captivating to customers. Its most famous dish was the sparkling chocolate volcano. In 1997, they had six restaurants, with another 12 restaurants planned to open the following year. However, Rainforest Cafe struggled to remain ahead of other themed restaurants after a splashy start. To date, only one half still exists in the United States. In an interview in the year 2000 with the San Francisco Chronicle, the location's former director of operations cited that their demise was due to the challenge of animatronic repairs since they required someone with specialized skills. Howard Johnson's So I must make my hotel of dreams like every other Howard Johnson's? Did you know that Howard Johnson's began as a pharmacy? Taking a slow path to success, it was founded in 1925 by Howard Deering Johnson. The store's format only changed once the owner noted the success the soda fountain was bringing in. Johnson soon created an ice cream recipe to capitalize on its popularity by increasing the butter fat content. It was soon added to their offerings to increase sales. The ice cream sandwiches! Ah! <laughs> 
1935, his roadside soda fountain was born. The pharmacy soon grew to include concession stands, later evolving to sit-down dining restaurants and even hotels. In the 60s and 70s, the Howard Johnson's restaurant chain was launched. As time progressed, they began selling franchise rights to those who agreed to copy the main restaurant's every detail, including the orange-roofed buildings. Eventually, Howard Johnson's had 28 different flavors of ice cream, which later became their claim to fame. While the restaurant became a huge success, it started to slowly decline, and by 2009, 870 locations had been pared down to three in New York State and Maine. The final restaurant shut down in 2017. However, there are still over 200 Howard Johnson hotels scattered across the nation. Red Barn There's a barn? What is your fascination with barns? America was quickly becoming a fast food nation during the 60s. Red Barn was among the companies that attained notoriety during this decade. This restaurant was known for its burgers, and while popular, this chain was smaller than its competitors, who were more prominent nationally. In addition to their hamburgers, this restaurant featured fish sandwiches, fried chicken, and a salad bar. With a country theme and barn-shaped locations, customers were initially attracted by their catchy jingle, When the Hungry's Hit, Hit the Red Barn. The restaurant was launched originally in 1961. During the restaurant's heyday, they boasted 400 restaurants in 22 states, Australia and Canada. However, despite their growing popularity, they couldn't compete with larger restaurant chains. Unlike the others, Red Barn went out of business simply because it didn't have the finances to compete with the larger, more popular chains. In 1986, they filed for bankruptcy protection. I declare Bankruptcy! By then, they had dwindled to operating only 22 outlets. Despite trying to revive the restaurant with a new marketing plan, new products, and renovations, Red Barn closed its doors for good in 1988. Burger Chef Sounds good, boss. Please call me Chef. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> chef. Thank you. Almost as big as McDonald's at one time, the American fast food chain Burger Chef opened in 1954 and reached its peak in the 70s. Burger Chef was known for its signature items like the Super Chef and Big Chef flame broiled burgers. They began opening restaurants across the U.S. with the strategy of only going into smaller towns. However, 1972 marked Burger Chef's downfall as their number of locations were surpassed by rival McDonald's. McDonald's was their fiercest competitor, and they now had 1,600 locations versus Burger Chef's 1,200. Burger Chef tried to remain competitive by introducing the Fun Meal, their signature kids' meal offering a burger, fries, drink, and a toy. This was almost one decade before the McDonald's Happy Meal. They also added the Works Bar, where people could customize their burgers with their own condiments. In 1979, McDonald's introduced their version of the Fun Meal, calling it the Happy Meal. This caused Burger Chef to sue. I will sue you for all your worth. Ultimately, Burger Chef lost. Eventually, the restaurant just couldn't compete with McDonald's growth. In 1982, Burger Chef was sold to the company that owned Hardee's, and most Burger Chef locations became Hardee's restaurants. Those which didn't get converted were closed. How sad is that? First time here? Then leave us a comment and hit that subscribe button. And for another great video, just tap or click.